League of Legends put out a season 2024 look ahead video right all the things we're gonna be doing with the league of legends you love league of legends you all love that game right we love that game and guess what they uh, announced <laughs> i know you know so you don't need to guess but, uh, oh there's my sausages Right, we're going to go here. We're going to go to anti-cheat. It's a hot-button topic in uh, Counter-Strike, funnily enough, but just in competitive gaming in general, right? And people fucking go, oh, Richard, Richard doesn't even play the games. He doesn't know anything about anti-cheat. I've written about cheating and caught active cheaters and exposed private cheats more than any other esports journalist. So, I have talked about it from all perspectives. I've talked about it being fun, even. I wrote an article a long time ago, and it really pissed people off, where I interviewed cheaters. <laughs> I interviewed people who toggled in-game, and, uh, <laughs> and sort of explained, it is kind of fun. You know, like, I, I sort of get it. Uh, and if it's not competitive and not for money, just grow up that was basically the theme of the article people went mental people called for me to be fired over that one at cadred that well out there not how can cadred a, a, a website about counter-strike source publish an article encouraging cheating in counter-strike we're not encouraging it we're just trying to explain the psychological mechanisms as to why people do it so i've i've, I've covered it from that angle Everyone, you can go and read the, whatever it's called, the 157 kilobyte apocalypse on the substack. I got a private cheat that was designed to be put into a mouse's memory. And so you could smuggle it into a computer and use it in a LAN. And there was loads of allegations going around. I got a copy of the cheat. I sent it to Valve. Spoiler, I've done that multiple times with multiple cheats, multiple exploits. I sent them the smoke exploit that I put in the video. You can go and watch the video where there was a smoke exploit where you can make smoke see through before I even made that information public i sent it to valve i have done more than my fair share to keep this fucking game clean because i understand that you want to play games and it should be a test of skill and cheaters ruin the ecosystem and if cheaters kind of skirt through as in they're legit cheating is what people are calling it now which is an oxymoron but esports fans are dumb so whatever maybe one day they could be somebody cheating at a tournament we've got the rmrs going on now we've had cheating we've had bans disqualifications so everyone is talking about cheating in counter-strike now there's some premises i don't accept i don't accept that there are more that just because cs2's come out there are now more cheaters as a percentage than there were in csgo don't believe uh, don't see why that would be the case people say but richard they got a leaderboard so pre-leaderboard people wanted to be global people cheated to get to global so i, I don't know I, I i reject that premise until you can show me some data show me the data there's more cheaters and i'll come along with you i also i i, I don't believe there is a cheater in every game at every level of play like people complain about i see the crying on reddit is so divorced from reality and then you will see clips of people making good plays and being accused of being a cheat and what you have to realize is this is this is the baggage of the game being 20 years old it has always attracted cheaters because it has a high skill ceiling going all the way back to the beta right if you can believe it there were cheats for see in in the beta of counter-strike and every time somebody played in a league that didn't have an anti-cheat pro players and had a pop-off performance pro players were accused of cheating there were a million ways to cheat in counter-strike by the way you could alt tab your game and turn walls see-through if you had a certain shader setting that you could literally do that you it used to be called the pink walls and so imagine the double doors on dust 2 being see-through in mid because what would happen is you would get pink and transparent checks and you could see through the doors and the box that used to be there and you know so there was just a million ways to cheat across all versions and so that sows distrust and so people then think everyone's cheating oh he pre-fired me he's a cheater 
He jumping headshotted me. He's cheating. Uh, he's got 40 kills. Uh, hello? Cheating. He just knows too much. It never, ever occurs to the person getting gaped that maybe they just suck. And that's the problem. The statistics lend themselves to you sucking is way more likely than them cheating. And until the Counter-Strike community can accept that fact, and it is a statistical reality, that you cannot have a sensible conversation about anti-cheat cheating, the cheating problem. It has to start there. So that's my take on that. But everybody is cr crying out for a kernel anti-cheat. We want a kernel anti-cheat. We want an invasive anti-cheat. Why don't Valve just make an invasive anti-cheat? And they think it's going to be a panacea for everything. By the way, CS fans, how, how is that kernel level anti-cheat going on over in the RMR? Oh, what? The kernel level anti-cheat's causing performance problems. Guess what? They will do that. They will cause lag. You've got an entire extra program injecting itself into, you know, your video game when you're playing it. It's disconnecting people, by the way. All the anti-cheats historically that we had, ESL Wire, Equitas, X-Ray, all of these all used to cause all sorts of problems. And by the way, they were also bypassable. There was a way you could just fucking, you ran it on a laptop with a copy of the fucking game going. A, a duplicate game that you could set up, basically. I'm, I'm not explaining it particularly well, but, you know, it would be the game on two screens. And the screenshots would come off that, but the cheat would be on that. People used to get around them. There was all sorts of ways to get around. And these kernel-level anti-cheats have bypasses. So, look, th what, I'm, what I'm saying is a separate anti-cheat software is not a panacea that's going to fix all the problems. I also saw on Reddit recently, people are going, oh, yeah, look at that. Look what this guy GamerDoc said. This guy GamerDoc. GamerDoc runs a fucking snitch Discord and is right, so embarrassed about him being part of their fucking infrastructure. They don't even recognize his employment officially. He is not a coder, not a developer, nothing like that. He's just a guy with a snitch Discord. That's it. So, isn't it a weird coincidence that people think Valorant has no cheaters, close to no cheaters, when, by the way, G Google private cheats for Valorant, and it just so happens to be a place where they dish out manual bans. Valve don't do that except in extreme circumstances, and also a place where you can't watch demos. If I can't watch playback of my own game, how can I ever really know if someone cheated against me? That's the trick that Valorant pulled. I'm not saying there aren't less cheaters in Valorant. I think, anecdotally, there's enough data to assume that there is. But at the end of the day, to say Valorant is cheat-free is ridiculous. Now, this is where we get to the video. That's just all ancillary content that people will get upset about and post, you know, oh, Richard's take on anti-cheats is so wrong, bad takes. Yeah, he's a great reporter. Everything he reports is right, but every opinion he has is wrong. We'll go through that again for the thousandth time. Can we, like, can we stop that in 2024? Like, please, for me, like, 20 years of service to the Counter-Strike community. Can we just n can say something original about me? Just one time. Say something original. Uh, just anything. Make something up. I don't even care at this point. I'm just sick of hearing the same five things. Please. All right? This is where we get to the video. Riot Games are using the specter of cheating. And by the way, they are very hyper aware about what's happening in Counter-Strike. They look at all the other games. Remember, Valorant was marketed with, we'll have 128 tick servers, and we'll have all the things the Counter-Strike player base are crying about. And P.S., our game is 70% Counter-Strike. They did all of that, right? So they're watching. They're reading Reddit every day going, wow, look how pissed off they all are. So they know that anti-cheats, these kernel-level anti-cheats, People are becoming less resistant to the idea of, of a corporation installing monitoring software on your machines. That's what they are. And now this is where you come in and you go, but Richard, have you ever accepted a cookie? I mean, look at me. I think we can safely say I've accepted more than one. But have you ever accepted a cookie? Yeah. You ever ex oh, have you ever downloaded a piece of software? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you ever given your rights, your data? Why do you think Facebook was advertising you girdles and wigs? Who are you, William Shatner? Yeah, I get it, right? It doesn't mean you have to accept more real-time monitor monitoring from a corporation that's owned 
by a Chinese company, and as I'm going to demonstrate to you, no matter what they say in this video, they would have to comply with a Chinese government request to share your data with them. So, here's the video. Just listen to what they say. Last year, we spent some time behind the scenes working on updating League's anti-cheat and bot detection software. As our current version had fallen... I like the way that bot detection software there, because of his accent, sounded like butt detection software. But anyway, there's a... Uh, a sort of sci-fi erotica concept for anyone in the chat. On behind the times. This was compounded by the security breach earlier in the year, which increased our vulnerability to botting and cheating. And a pretty consistent piece of feedback that we've been hearing from you all is the high number of bots in games, disruptive smurfs and ranked, and an increase in scripting. We know this has been a consistent pain point in League, so it's been something we've been working on fixing. Now, by the way, just so you know, because of how League works, it's super hard to cheat in League by comparison to other games. As I've said, to Counter-Strike fans, if you think a kernel-level anti-cheat is going to fix everything, I urge you to go and play PUBG, where they use Battle Eye, and enjoy, being, uh, enjoy a game where you literally have a cheater, at least one, in every game. PUBG is a mess. You don't know what you're talking about, right? Escape from Tarkov, exactly the same shit. A game completely ruined by there being cheaters in every game, right? So, because how League's made, with all of the stuff, you know, the majority of the stuff being, like, server-side, there's, like, some scripting you can do. But, you know, like, uh, and it's the same in Dota. You can get scripts and certain types of map hack or whatever but it's only so because it's played on a server owned by valve and there's nothing you know like client side uh there's only so much you can do with it so the cheating problem in league is virtually non-existent and i'll add riot games have sued every scripting company or into oblivion and non-existence they've gone after them legally in the courts they name them it, it's like because it, when they when they sue them in california the documents become public events if you're a cheat coder cheat coders always have shady histories they they're hackers they do cyber crimes they work with criminals now your name is public, is it? Fuck that. That is a deterrent in and of itself. That's before you get to the fines and the jail time, right? So that that's the thing. But anyway, they are now exaggerating the problem in League. I don't know. I don't read the League of Legends subreddit. So I... Because there's, there's nothing for me there. But I... I or indeed humanity. But I don't... Um, I, I, so I don't know if people are legitimately complaining about scripters and bots and whether or not this is disruptive in games. I would imagine this is bullshit because Riot just wants to get their kernel level anti-cheat on your machine. One of our goals this year is to maintain and improve the competitive integrity in all of your league games, whether it's in ranked or normals, clash, arena, whatever. So in late February or early March, we're bringing Vanguard to league. Vanguard is our proprietary anti-cheat and anti-botting software that's been active in Valorant since the beginning. We've seen a huge amount of success in their ability to catch and stop cheaters in their games, and we expect to see similar results when we implement it in League. Similar to Valorant's version of Vanguard, Leagues will run at the kernel level. This is becoming standard for strong anti-cheat software in gaming, as cheat and bot makers are quick to adapt. If you don't run at this level, they will, and thereby evade all of the anti-cheat software as a result. Now, Vanguard offers us the ability to catch standard. bots and cheaters as quickly and effectively as possible. It also gives us the opportunity to do things like hardware ban offenders and terminate matches in which a cheater is detected. You know, refunding, loss of LP for everybody except the person cheating, of course. Now, we know that there's a question and concern of data privacy. Right, so uh, before we get to the concern of data privacy and the wishy-washy statement here that I am then going to show you is a direct... Like, they, they are not being honest with you about the data that Vanguard collects or transparent about how long they retain it for. But let's just also say, what they've done there, as you see, it's quite clever. They are selling the idea of a kernel-level anti-cheat. They are telling you explicitly only the benefits with none of the downsides. Hey, what do people cry about? <laughs> I don't want to lose a video game because the cheater beat me. You can just alt-tab, watch a YouTube video, come back, game's over. 
get on with your life. Uh, no, find them, find them, report them, ban them. Uh, uh. Right, just the inherent childishness of the average competitive gamer. You know, and that's fair. They're young, a lot of them. It's fine. But understand when you, one of the reasons people cheat in the first place is to piss you off and ruin your day. And if you sit there crying and calling them names, they're just going, ah, 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 you, you mad, bro? You mad, bro? Get good, bro? So just don't give them the satisfaction. But no one's ever going to learn that lesson as well. Like, imagine if cheating was just really boring for the cheater. And they were just endlessly winning games with no effort and no one got angry. There's actually a very high, well, not a very high, but there's a percentage of rage hackers that would just stop. But no, keep crying, keep molding, keep fueling them. Um, but anyway, they've explicitly sold you only on the benefits. They've explicitly said, it'll, it'll stop cheaters in your game. And it, it'll stop the game immediately, giving you your time back. And it'll refund all the LP. And it's like, haha, fuck you, Valve. Look what we're doing for our player base. But b besides the buy, what do I have to agree to to get this wonderful thing? Well, I have to install a piece of software. Now, as I know from when I reviewed Valorant, even in the beta, even for the review, with the early access I had for review purposes, I had to install Vanguard. And Vanguard, it's there. To c close it down properly, you have to restart your PC. I'm pretty sure that's still true. It certainly was back then. So what's it doing when I'm not playing when I'm not playing Valorant? That's what I want to know. Why have they still got that level of access? When when the game isn't even on, it's a separate piece of software and it just sits there. Closing down Valorant doesn't shut it down. And now the version that's going to be in League, so it's there when you boot up your computer. You boot it up. You can probably get some settings around it, but I think it has to be there to work in the way it needs to. So I've got a piece of software that is collecting data on my machine for as long as my machine is on. Unless I manually shut it down. So, I mean, no. <laughs> no. And by the way, before we even get into China, before we even get into that, why on earth would I let Riot do it? How many data breaches have Riot had? They had the one in 2013 I uncovered and wrote about where they hid it from people. They had the one where they sent out people's details falsely as part of GDPR. And they got that wrong. And they risked ma massive GDPR fines. They had the source code leak. That's just leak. So, guys, I'm just going to say, if you ever showed the world you could handle data safely, then maybe you could have it. But you can't. You as a company, you've had your three fucking strikes. And you must be very much out of being allowed to harvest data. In fact, if the government was a bit more savvy, they simply wouldn't allow you to do it. For the same reasons that we're going to get into. Same reason they want to shut down TikTok. Because we know now TikTok was monitoring journalists. It was monitoring the whereabouts and activities of White House of officials. We also know that in America, TikTok was pushing at a way higher degree pro-Palestinian content deliberately by the algorithm pre-programmed over Israel content. And somewhere in that, that was when that letter to America from Bin Laden started trending. And a bunch of Zoomers were going, hey, that Bin Laden guy wasn't so bad because the Chinese government are doing it. It's a fucking espionage tool. It's not just funny little videos. So... That's what would happen in a fair and just society. Riot Games, would, you would just be told, like, you have le you leaked data here, you didn't tell people about it and tried to cover it up, and then it came out again because the hacker left a back door when he got your password. You've had a source code leak. You've breached GDPR. No, actually, any data harvesting software you've got, we get to audit it, and if you fuck up in any way, we can shut your company down. And by the way, oh, what's that? You're also, uh, you're also legally compelled to comply with Chinese requests for american users uh -uh, sorry we're gonna ban you in fact when they were talking about banning tiktok people were literally afraid league of legends was going to get shut down as a result of the same legislation but no instead we're getting this so let's let's talk about those data concerns how are you going to address those concerns riot chill around kernel level anti cheat this is something that came up with vanguard and valorant as well and we want to take a moment to tackle those concerns up front here 
Vanguard does not collect or process any personal information differently from our current anti-cheat software. See how he broke up that sentence? It doesn't process any personal information. Strange pause. That differently to what it does for Valorant. So it does then. It does pro. And by the way, I'm going to show you in the TOS where they cannot tell lies. <laughs> I'm going to show what the thing you agree to when you go there. I'm going to show you what v Vanguard actually does and why it's a problem. We're going on a journey today, right? So I know. Keep keep. How, how long? How long do you keep it? What do you keep? Can you can you be specific, please? We don't need or want to know anything more about you or your machine other than what is necessary to maintain integrity when playing our games. Could you define what is necessary then? Will you? Will the next sentence be you defining what is necessary? It's just so we all know, for full transparency. Now, if you already have Vanguard oh, no. because you've played Valorant, you won't need to do anything else and you can continue as normal. But if you haven't, starting in a few weeks, you'll be required to install Vanguard in order to play League. We know that this may be a meaningful change, but we're very confident it will lead to an overall better league experience for everyone. We'll be sure to communicate with you all as the changes go live and to let you know how things are going afterwards. All right, we're going to hand things back off to the dev team now for an update on... That's it. Right. Now, put it this way. Again, maybe I'm just a Euro poor or whatever the fuck Americans call it. The rules around data protection are very explicit. All that GDPR stuff. Well, I mean, I'm not even a Europer, am I? Curse the Brexit. I'm a Brexiteer, aren't I? Right? I'm, all, I'm, I'm living in R Rishi Sunak's broken Britain. But anyway, we've always, data protection laws have always been incredibly specific. What you can have, how long you can have it for, and I absolutely have the right at any time to make a request for you to share that data with me. It used to be called pre-GDPR, a subject access request, and companies had to comply anywhere your data was stored, mentioned, used, who they'd passed it on to, they had to be able to account for it or they could be fined right that that was how it worked so in this video you're just saying listen we don't want to know more than we have to to keep cheaters out your game yeah can you specify what that is and by the way we're not gonna take anything <laughs> we're not already taking okay yeah but what are you taking you know and in terms of how long we've got it for we don't want to keep it any longer than we need how long is that it's actually fucking insane that they're just this vague about it. And so I'm going to just take you in to the, the, the Vanguard uh, terms of service. First, let me actually show you their... Uh, if you go back to 2020, uh, when Vanguard came out, there was, ob ob with Valorant, there was obviously a lot of discussion about it. Oh, kernel level anti-cheat, Riot having my data, Riot's owned by Machina. So they did a blog post to address concerns that is similarly fucking vague, right? So here they are. A little background on Riot security, what they want to do with it, uh, the anti-cheat team, uh, you know, why they designed Vanguard. But anyway, and so it goes here. The bottom line is we would never let Riot ship anything if we weren't confident it treated player privacy and security with the extreme seriousness they deserve. Okay, good. With that in mind, let's look at our philosophy for Vanguard and the fundamentals of... Target no, 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 no. Let's not look at that. Let's look at what data you're harvesting. It, it, be explicit, please. I want to know what you're taking when I run this piece of software. And what they go on to say is, we want to commit the highest integrity uh, in our games. The battle against cheats is evolving. It's cat and mouse. If an anti-cheat software is only running user mode, its uh, capability is compromised. Vanguard helps us get around this. Vanguard does not collect or process any personal information beyond what the current League of Legends anti-cheat solution does. Riot does not want to know more about you or your machine than what is necessary to maintain high integrity in the game. Are you ever going to fucking tell me what it is, guys? Are you ever going to reveal the secret? Why can you not say to me what it is? And by the way, spoiler, they don't anywhere in that blog post. That was the, that was the blog post that they used and yes you've you've clocked it it's the same phraseology isn't it the same phrasing why why does it have to be the same phrasing there's probably some legal ramifications they can probably get around it by saying that so okay all right well 
I then want to also add, I don't know if you remember this, I did a video on it. Right, so remember, we don't want to take any more data than we need, okay? Uh, we just want to ensure the highest levels of integrity in your game. So anyway, we've updated the game uh, through Vanguard uh, that now it records your voice. They introduced this in 2021, right? And so here it is, the, the, the voice evaluation. So the update to our privacy notice allows us to record and potentially evaluate voice data when using Riot-owned voice comms channels. So in other words, when you speak in-game. When a player submits a report for disruptive or offensive behavior in voice comms, the relevant audio data will be stored in your account's registered region and evaluate to see if our behavior agreement was violated. If a violation is detected, we'll take action. After the data has been made available in, uh, to the player in violation and is no longer needed for reviews, the data will be deleted, similar to how we currently handle text-based chat reports. If no violation is detected or if no report is filed in a timely manner, the data will will be deleted and in the q a about it data privacy we believe we should collect the absolute minimum data to effectively run our games and continuously improve your experience when we collect data we'll be transparent when's that happening and we'll keep it for only as long as is necessary and we'll protect it as if it were our own you had a source code leak you stupid cunts you lost all your data so that does not reassure me you fucking cretins what a thing to say actually the worst thing you can say then, we know collecting voice data is a concern for many of you, but be assured we would never ship anything if we weren't comfortable having our own data treated the same way. And if you prefer to not have your voice chat captured, you may turn off uh, voice chat. So, they, they're now re so they're recording your, your voice chat in Valorant and storing it for an undetermined amount of time for purposes that they d d are not transparently explaining at all and I, I did a video on why that was concerning and people were like as long as it stops people being meanie poos in my game all right so nowhere have they explicitly explained what data they are taking so you if you want to find that you have to go to their official Riot Games privacy notice. And this was last modified in September 2023. It is the most up-to-date copy. And this is what everyone has to be aware of. Info we collect, right? So, we collect information in three main ways. You provide some of it by registering for an account. We record some of it automatically with the technologies like cookies. We receive some of it from third parties like social media companies. The particular kinds of info we gather usually depend on how you interact with us, like which Riot services you use and how you do so. So, the info we collect, we automatically collect some information about how you interact and navigate Riot services, as well as the device and software you use to do so. So here we go. Common examples include your use of Riot services, timestamps, clicks, scrolling, browsing times, browsing heat maps, searches, referrals, exit pages, and activity and interactions in our game clients, including chat logs. So in other words, every click you make in the game is recorded. Okay? Every single click, everything you type, everything. Your computer or device, uh, such as IP addresses, unique device IDs, processing capabilities, manufacturer and model, language, and other regional settings, the geographic location and screen resolution, and other settings on your PC. Right? So, keep in mind, on Steam, you have to opt in for them to take that. They do those little surveys, so they can, like, optimize games, Right? So, in other words, they have your, like, Mac ID, your IP, like, just everything. Everything about your computer, your entire setup. They know when you change a graphics card, for example. They know when you bought it. Your connection to the Riot services, including details about the network and software you're using. So, your browser type, the version, the operating system name, your ISP, and your preference settings. So they are literally looking at your preferences on your browser setup, right? Then, 
how the riot services perform, including problems you may encounter, such as loading errors and response times. So you know that little window that pops up when it goes, there's a bug, do you want to report? Riot Games have already, you've already reported it. It doesn't matter what you click. Then, we may use technologies like cookies, scripts, and our own servers to help us collect and store this info, including in uh, log files. Then, information we collect uh, from third parties. So, they, they get info from third parties to use along the info they collect directly from you. And it says here, we obtain info from third parties if you use their services in connection with the Riot services. So, if you link your Facebook account with the Riot services via the Add Friends feature, your privacy settings on the third parties uh, service control what info they can share with us. And that can include your name, your profile picture, your gender, your age, your username, what language you use, the country, who your friends are, and other info you made available on that platform do you remember when you first came into league of legends there was a thing find your friends find their emails find the find your friend on facebook and you were encouraged to do it they even gave you lp to encourage it well now think of all the scandals facebook have had riot's got all of that data riot has got all of that data now by the way the fact that I have a fucking pen friend in Timbuktu that I occasionally talk to via Facebook, is that necessary for you to ensure the integrity of the game? Is that necessary for you to improve the services? No, of course it isn't. So, there's some more stuff. I'll just read you down here. We gather advertising and analytics from third-party services. We gather, we collect info from third-party services to help us identify uh, from where you're using the Riot services. Uh, this can help uh, process purchases and prevent fraud and abuse. We will receive info from third-party platforms like the Apple App Store or Google Play if you download our services through that. Uh, and Meta provides us with info about your use of our fan pages on Facebook. So in other words, all of those fan pages on Facebook, what you're into, what you're interested in, Meta is selling that to Riot and they're storing it. So let's say, for example, uh, you're like, I don't know, your favorite character is uh, Tristana, right? Just pulling one out the hat that I can remember. Right, and you're on a fan page for, for Tristana. Well, Meta sells that info to Riot, and then Riot can maybe market you with Tristana's fucking skin that you're more likely to buy. And that's all in there. And someone in the chat's just typed if a friend from uh, school that you just added randomly, like cheated in League of Legends or did something bad, they know you have that association. Don't see any problem with Riot, one of the most vindictive and petty games companies I've ever seen. And in summary, depending on your use of the services, we divide uh, the type of info we collect into the following categories. Identifiers, which are your name, your telephone number, your billing address, characteristics of protected classifications under federal law, including your date of birth, gender, accessibility-related health information. We keep commercial information, including interaction with the Riot Services customer support, your purchase history, your payment method, uh, how you uh, use the internet or other electronic network activity information including use of riot services with timestamps the computer or device all the stuff we listed your geolocation data audio electronic visual thermal olfactory or similar information including audio and text chat other information including survey data preferences interests general demographic info hobbies and favorite games and inferences drawn from non-sensitive categories of information above like put it this way after Vanguard, what what's left? Send them in a fucking stool sample. Is that where we're at? So they have completely fucking gaslit you by using that phrase, nothing we don't already take. And guess what? They take and store everything that they can, that they can feasibly fucking get. And now they can do it in real time. Now they have a permanent window on your PC. If you're a League of Legends player and you agree to this in the same way I said it to the Valorant community and I don't play Valorant, I will not have that shit on my fucking machine. You're fucking mad. You are dizzy. If you are doing it because of, huh, that Lee's sin was a bit too quick, you are mental.
You are not a serious person. I don't want the industry to be driven in a direction where your requirement to just not feel like you're shit in a video game is going to mean that for anyone else to play it, they have to give up all of that to a company that's essentially a subsidiary of the Chinese government. And we'll come to that next part, because I've talked about it a lot. And I want to really go deep on this so people understand what I'm saying. So... We've just looked at all the types of data. And uh, Valorant, and now League, using Vanguard, they're owned by Riot Games. Riot Games is now entirely owned by Tencent Holding. There is no, like, little NA enclave anymore. It is all Tencent. And Tencent, um, I believe corporations in china have this thing i think it's called is it like it's not the angel share it's uh, it, but there's a term and i can't remember it and someone in the chat might remember it but anyway it's basically a chinese company the golden share thank you the golden share the the angel share is whiskey evaporation that's why it's on my fucking pickled brain but the golden share the state owns a share within the company recently you'll remember i did a video on them they jacked 10 cents loot and gave it out for public goods so the government didn't have to pay for it and just said oh it, it you know 10 cent have done these charitable philanthropic works they had no say in it you don't say no to the chinese government or they just shut you down activision blizzard how's my netease distribution today dickhead the entanglement between the Chinese government and big Chinese corporations is all over the place. And you, you, you've got to play nice. So there is a law in China that got enacted. And I just want to show people it. I've looked up the very specific law because it's, it's called the National Intelligence Law of the People's Republic of China is what it is you want to go look it up yourself and it has a wikipedia page we can show in pretty simple terms what this law is the national intelligence law of the people's republic of china gov uh, governs china's intelligence and security apparatus it is the first law made public in china which is related to china's national intelligence agencies the law however does not specifically name any of the organizations to which it applies such as the ministry of state or the ministry of public security according to the law everyone is responsible for state security which is in line with china's state security legal structure as a whole and what does that mean in in real terms it means if the chinese government says we suspect someone of being in violation of state security your company must comply with the government to give us that information that we crave because you have a responsibility so the most controversial sections in the law include article 7 which potentially compels businesses registered registered or operating in the People's Republic of China to hand over information to Chinese intelligence agencies such as the MSS and to conceal the fact that they do so. <laughs> so the law doesn't just say they have to do it. The law says they have to do it and not say they're doing it. That's the law. That is what... The Ch any company that operates in China can be compelled to do. It goes on. This has implications to Chinese businesses operating overseas, specifically technology companies, compelling them to hand over user data even when operating in foreign jurisdictions. And Article 18 elevates and expands the authority of national intelligence work institutions, exempting personnel from border control measures at key points of entry throughout the country. And these are the articles for this particular topic article 7 says all organizations and citizens shall support assist and cooperate with national intelligence efforts in accordance with law and shall protect national intelligence work secrets they're aware of that's the part where they say if we ask you something you can't tell anyone about it article 10 is necessary for their work national intelligence work institutions are to use the necessary means tactics and channels to carry out intelligence efforts domestically and abroad article 18 as required for work and in accordance with relevant national provisions, national intelligence work institutions may ask organs such as for customs and entry exit border inspection to provide facilitation such as exemptions from uh, inspection. Not really relevant, that one. I don't know why I read it. But anyway. Um, and so, look, loads of people... Uh, th this story was a huge story when this law got passed because... 
How do you say that company? Uh, you know, not many people know how to pronounce it. I'm super glad to tell you. I do know how to pronounce it. It's Huawei. You might have heard of a company called Huawei, right? And there was a huge story about it where the Chinese government was asking their, because they're a telephony company, to give them data upon request. There was an article about it in the Financial Times. Is Huawei compelled by Chinese law to help with espionage, right? That's the title of the article. And I'm not going to read you all the article. It's pretty long. But Huawei tried to argue against the law and said, uh, I don't think we have to do it. And the Chinese government and other lawyers and everyone else were like, no, 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 it's very clear, you, you do. So Huawei subsidiaries and employees outside of China are not subject to the territorial jurisdiction of the national intelligence law. That was Huawei's argument, right? And the response to that is, the national intelligence law mandates intelligent agents to do work within and outside of China and to compel organizations to assist them in their work. State security officials have in the past traveled to the US to harass practitioners of the Falun Gong spiritual group. I think the territoriality issue is a red herring, said Paul Haswell, a partner at Pinset Masons in Hong Kong. Regardless of what any law says, if the state asks you to do something, you'll face consequences if you don't, be they legal or more sinister. The Communist Party is supreme and has the final say on everything. Now, do you think maybe then, with that in mind, it is a bad idea to install this software just to play a video game. You have to understand, right? Given the scope of the data they can harvest, you might be comfortable giving your data out, but you might not just be giving your data out. You, you might be, again, if they, if they can get into your Facebook, whatever else, whatever other social media stuff, do you really think it's a good fucking idea to have software watching you? What What else? It can, it can see what you're looking at in your browser history, you know? It can see whether you're a political dissident, whether you stood with Hong Kong when that was fashionable before you all forgot about it. It can hear what you're saying in your microphone. So I might be having a conversation in the background, not streaming, not even playing a game. That conversation gets heard. And, and, again, how long are they storing it for? They haven't said, and they won't say. And you will notice in that video, they were deliberately vague because they don't want you to know the totality of the scope. Here's my advice, right? And it, it's not an ideal solution, but do not install that software. It's definitely not a good idea. Make sure, if you want to get your fix of a MOBA, Go and play Dota 2. It's free to play. You've already got a Steam account. Yes, it's harder. And yeah, I can't believe I'm getting all you fucking cunts to come into Dota 2. And you'll probably end up griefing my games because you're shit. Dota is a superior game anyway with way more depth. It's not as quick. It's not about reaction shots. It'll take you a, a good hundred hours to even just feel comfortable with it if you're coming from League. But do it. Because they're not listening to your recordings uh, of your voice. They're not listening to you and storing recordings of your voice. They aren't harvesting insane amounts of data like that. And, crucially, they don't have to comply with the fucking Chinese government for the data that they ha they do have. Well, they do, because they operate in China, but they aren't a company owned by China. So, in other words, if Valve got a request... They might comply, they might not. They might refuse, and they're safe territorial, territorially in U.S. jurisdiction. Tencent is a Chinese company. If they get asked something to be done by the Chinese government, they're going to do it every time, without fail. You, Riot Games cannot guarantee your data is safe until that arrangement changes, until that law is repealed, and it isn't going to be.